Ouch. Things got a bit tense during an interview when Fox News host Stuart Varney publicly scolded Trump campaign spokeswoman Caroline Levitt about Trump's divisive rhetoric and name calling. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, this was a lot of fun. We've got several clips to play in this video, and it got surprisingly tense. So this is an exchange between Stuart Varney, a Fox business host, Fox News host, one of the more sane uh, people in the Fox umbrella, versus Carolyn Levitt, who is just a, a stereotypical MAGA supporter, MAGA Republican, somebody who just echoes and regurgitates and signal boosts Trump's divisive rhetoric rather than try to downplay it or sanitize it. I mean, just a MAGA cultist through and through. This interview occurred in the aftermath of Super Tuesday, in which Nikki Haley dropped out of the race. Uh, and the context of that is Trump continuously insults Nikki Haley and belittles her supporters, whereas President Biden um, extends an open olive branch, an open invitation for Nikki Haley supporters to join his campaign. So with the context of all of this, this is the exchange between Varney and Levitt. Okay, uh, Karen, I've got a complaint. I know the campaign wants to win over Nikki Haley's voters, but I don't think you do that with name calling. For example, I take issue with Trump's new nickname for California governor, calling him new scum. I don't think that's a good idea. I object to that kind of language. How about you? Well, I think that what Governor Gavin Newsom has done to the great state, once great state of California, is terrible. You see real oh, scum, real homeless people Are you okay with bringing back, excuse streets. me, are you okay, are you saying it's okay to bring that kind of language to a presidential campaign, new scum? Yeah, that's okay? I... I think the real problem here, Stu, is the policies of the deranged Democrats from no. Gavin Newsom to Joe Biden. I think your that have campaign has American a problem with language like that. Country. You don't agree with me, but I think your campaign has a problem with language like that. Well, I don't think voters respectfully agree with you either, Stu. If you look at the resounding really? wins that President Trump has so received across the board. You think you're going to win yes. over Haley voters with language like that, do you? You win over moderates Presid and women with language like that? Really? Pre so <laughs> the clip cuts off here, but I will I do want to read um, what she says in response to this. So she says, Trump is winning with independence and with women right now. Levitt replied, we need to not be so afraid of using tough rhetoric. Actually, it's not tough rhetoric. Barney said it's obscene. So here's the reality right now. The MAGA cult is, um, I would say, unjustifiably confident at the moment. Yes, they won the primary decisively, not by absurd margins, Nikki Haley put up a fight again and again and again. It was a closer margin for Trump in the Republican primary than it was for President Biden by far, even though the media suggests otherwise. The numbers simply don't add up. Joe Biden had a much better time in the Democratic primary than did Donald Trump up against Nikki Haley. And it's not enough to win the primary, especially for a Republican, given that Republicans, generally speaking, tend to be on the losing side of the popular vote. They need to win more than that. You can't just win the presidency with the Republican base. You need to expand the umbrella. So, so Varney's position was, listen, you haven't even maxed out the Republican vote, let alone courting independents and moderates. And you're actively insulting Nikki Haley. You're insulting uh, Nikki Haley supporters. As a matter of fact, while we're talking, this is what Donald Trump had to say about courting Nikki Haley voters uh, about the time that he won the primary. You've talked about you've talked about you've talked about trying to unify the party. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters, some of whom voted for you in 2020, but say they don't want to now? How do you, how do you bring them back into the town? They're going to all vote for me again. They're going to all vote for me again, everybody. And I'm not sure we need too many. I'm not sure we need too many. So he's been wildly inconsistent on this. He's talked about unifying the party. Then he openly insults Nikki Haley. He openly says that anybody who donated Nikki Haley or voted for Nikki Haley or supported Nikki Haley, they're not welcome nor people who support Mitt Romney or John McCain, et cetera, and so forth. So Trump, in predictable Trump fashion, has been wildly schizophrenic and inconsistent about this. And so Varney was right to pressure Carolyn Levitt. And again, no humility whatsoever. And by the way, note the divisive language she uses even in that interview. She doesn't, you know, try to paper it down saying, yeah, he got, he got the, you know, he lost his temper a bit. Yeah, it's intemperate language. She actively insults California. She refers to California as the once great state of California, the most populous uh, state in the United States, the wealthiest state in the United States that, you know, the, the state that contributes by far the most to GDP, blowing Florida and Texas out of the water. 
She just insults millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people. And this is part and parcel of what Donald Trump does. And again, it's just so fascinating to me because so Carolyn Levitt and others like her clutch their pearls when Democrats give them a fraction of that sort of aggressive posture, right? They can't handle it. They'd love to dish it out, but can't handle it. Now, the Lincoln Project put together um, this great uh, advertisement about this exact situation, Donald Trump winning the primary, the Republican primary, but seemingly having no interest whatsoever in recording the voters and supporters of Nikki Haley. Donald Trump has made it clear, if you donated to Nikki Haley in the Republican primary, Donald Trump doesn't want you. Donald Trump warns anyone who donates to Nikki Haley's campaign will be blacklisted, saying any donors will be permanently barred from the mega camp. If you're a Republican who supports Mitt Romney, Donald Trump doesn't want you. We're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. We want to get Romneys and those out. And if you are a Republican and don't want Trump to be the nominee, Donald Trump doesn't want you. Anyone who is not on board with seeing Donald Trump as the 47th president is welcome to leave. This is the disposition of a weak, fragile man. A man whose ego is so delicate that he purges anyone who offers the slightest critique. So Donald Trump has made it clear he doesn't want us. Well, the feeling is mutual. We don't want him either. And we don't want him getting anywhere close to the White House again. I'm sorry, it was the Republican Accountability Project. Uh, it's, it's similar to uh, the Lincoln Project, but not quite the same. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be a very effective advertisement, especially, again, because Donald Trump has no margin for error. I'll show you another clip uh, in which a strident anti-Biden conservative is trying to make that case as well. But before I do, with respect to the name calling, I always love fishing out this clip because Jessica Tarlov puts it beautifully when it comes to the double standard associated between Trump's name calling and Trump supporters complaining about so-called liberal, you know, elite coastal liberals looking down their nose at them. A while ago, obviously Hillary Clinton is someone who is incredibly important to the party, and I have defended her comments um, in that interview, talking about the fact that Democrats are so far from being in a cult on a comparative basis to Republicans, it's actually laughable. And I do really struggle to find it in my tiny liberal heart to feel terrible <laughs> for Republicans when we get called things like communist, socialist, thugs, pedophiles. Donald Trump called Democrats every name in the book. It is part of the Republican playbook to demonize us and to make it seem like it is the end of the world if Democrats are in power. And I love seeing the look on Kaylee McEnany's face there. The Well, that doesn't count. You're not supposed to talk about that. She's such a loser. She's a former uh, Trump uh, press secretary as well. Just like, oh, yeah, Donald Trump didn't did indeed say all of those things. Um, now, again, if you look at the polls, uh, Nikki Haley supporters uh, are not pleased with Donald Trump very often. Uh, we, I did a recent collaboration with Luke Beasley. We went over some of the alarming statistics. You know, two thirds of them think that Donald Trump is not mentally fit to be president. Eighty percent of them say that they will not automatically vote for the Republican candidate if it is Donald Trump. And 73 percent said that they would be unenthused if Trump won the primary, which, of course, he did. Now. Beyond that, there's also just general polling, which says that Donald Trump, unlike President Biden, lacks the temperament and the character to be president. So uh, Stuart Varney's correct. Like these insults and this this divisive rhetoric coming from Trump is going to hurt him electorally unless he changes course. Uh, but this is what Mark Thiessen, um, a conservative anti-Biden commentator of Fox News, this is the warning that he issued to the MAGA camp. Oh, uh Ed in the WAPO, and uh, the headline is uh, Trump needs Haley voters who win back the White House. And what you make, you make the case that he's got a lot of great supporters who are 100% behind him, yep. but he can't win with just them. He needs to get the independents and the Republicans who voted for her during the primary. Yeah, no, 100%. Hey, uh, Nikki Haley is out of the race, but her voters will probably decide the 2024 election. Uh, you know, they, they, are, uh, they are the swing voters of 2024. They're a mix of non-MAGA Republicans, mostly, with some independents and Democrats mixed in, and they're going to decide this race. I, I went back and looked at all the races so far, right. and she, has exact, she won exactly 2,873,491 votes. The 2020 election was decided by 42,918 votes in three states. So Trump can't afford to leave any votes on the table. 
He really can. And yet that's precisely what he's doing. So, uh, listen, I just love that exchange. I love the fact that it got – you can see the frustration, the anger, the outrage on Stuart Varney's face at just the smug condescension coming from Carolyn Levitt and the Trump campaign. Like, you are not in a position – you know, it would be bad enough if a former president and aspiring president of the United States was just, again, openly cruel to his enemies. That's bad enough. Um, but it would be at least more understandable if there was a margin for error for that person, like if they enjoyed 60 to 70 percent public support and they were mocking the remaining 30 percent. Again, terrible and unpresidential, but at least understandable that they would feel comfortable to do that. Donald Trump is a wildly unpopular man who has never won the popular vote for the presidency, whose favorabilities are not great. Uh, you can say what you want about President Biden, and, and perhaps Trump can get just enough to squeak by Biden. But again, not much by way of a margin for error. So the confidence and the condescension and the cruelty are just completely unjustified. I love the fact that Varney called the MAGA camp out. Let me know what you think in the comments.